Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this unit, we'll be looking at the different ways to write equations for lines. In this video, we're going to be kicking this off with the most common form of linear equation, slope-intercept form. All the equations in this unit will be linear equations. This means that they have a constant slope that doesn't change. So the graph will always look like a straight line. The most common form for linear equations is slope-intercept form. You know those two important things that we've been talking about all throughout the last unit, slope and y-intercept? As I'm sure you can guess, slope-intercept form has a pretty strong connection to those. In fact, they both appear right there in the equation. m, that value multiplying the x, is the slope. And b, the value being added, is the y-intercept. Let's look at a few examples and pick out the slope and y-intercept. In the linear equation, y equals negative 2x plus 3, what's the slope? The slope is always the value multiplying x, so that will be negative 2. Slopes are supposed to be rates with one number over another, but that's not a problem because any number is the same as itself over 1. So a slope of negative 2 could easily be written as negative 2 over 1. What about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is the constant being added. So in this case, it's 3. Remember that y-intercepts are actually points requiring two values. So the y-intercept is actually 0, 3. All this means is that if we plugged in 0 for the x, then y would come out as 3 automatically, because the term with x zeroes out. So let's try a slightly trickier one. y equals negative x. What's the slope? Well, we already know that the slope is the number multiplying x, but there isn't a number there? There's a negative, but no number. So would the slope be 0? Well, no, that wouldn't make any sense. If we multiplied x by 0, then there wouldn't be an x anymore. So then what would we multiply by to turn x into negative x? What causes a number to flip? So oh, right. Negative 1. Any variable that doesn't seem to have a multiplier is actually being multiplied by 1. So the invisible number here is a 1. So that solves that mystery. So then what's the y-intercept? Aren't we supposed to have a number being added? Well, just like the invisible 1 multiplier, if there doesn't seem to be any addition happening, that's because you're adding nothing. Literally, you're adding 0. In this example, there were two invisible numbers, an invisible multiplier of 1 and an invisible constant of 0. So what's the slope in y equals negative 4 plus 3x? If you just said that the slope is negative 4, look closer. The slope is the number multiplying x, so that's 3. Remember, addition and subtraction can be reorganized as long as the signs remain on the same numbers. So this equation is the same as this one. Sometimes it helps to rewrite equations with the x term first, since that's how we're used to seeing it. So then what's the y-intercept? It's the constant being added, so that's negative 4 here. Notice that in the rewritten version, there's no addition. Instead of adding negative 4, we see subtraction by 4. Remember, subtracting is the same as adding a negative. So it could also be written like this. Let's do a few going backwards. I'll give you the slope and y-intercept, and then you tell me the equation. Ready? What would the equation be if the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is 0, 5? The slope tells us what x is being multiplied by, and the y-intercept tells us what to add to the end. So the line with the slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0, 5 has the equation y equals 2x plus 5. Slightly harder one now. If a line has a slope of 1 third and goes through the point 0, comma, negative 7, what is its equation? The slope is 1 over 3, so in our equation, x will be multiplied by 1 over 3. And even though the problem doesn't call it the y-intercept, we know that the point 0, comma, negative 7 must be the y-intercept because the x-coordinate is 0. So the y-intercept is negative 7. 
since we're adding a negative number, we can actually rewrite that to just minus 7. Understanding slope-intercept form is really easy, and you'll see it in the next lesson that graphing equations in slope-intercept form is just as easy. Hey, hey.